Attention ramen lovers, today is the day you've been waiting for because there's not one, not two, but three different ramens being made especially for your erotic fantasies. Wait, what? Wait, yeah, let me... No erotic fantasies. Can we change that? To not erotic fantasies? I, I, I didn't, uh, I, I don't know what I meant by erotic fantasies. I didn't mean erotic fantasies. I meant your wildest dreams. Is that better? That's what you meant. Yeah. That's what I meant. Wildest dreams. It's close. It's, right? it's close. Erotic fantasies, wildest. It's all good, but the point remains. It's ramen day, bitches. Ramen day. Ready? Here's our lineup. Birria ramen. Oh, you've heard about it, and now it will happen. Live in front of you. Not quite live. Definitely in front of you. Carbonara ramen, which really is an obvious thing without having to mess with spaghetti. Then you just get the ramen noodles. It happens faster and then to wrap it all up there's shrimp involved there's gochujang all of our favorite uh, korean pepper paste it's a little touch of soy it's oh it's gonna be great it's gonna be great we start with the birria because in the pressure cooker it takes about an hour so we'll get that going we'll knock off the other two come back and finish up very strong that's how we start you head to the supermarket and you get yourself four guajillo chilies and two pasilla chilies. Well, look, I've already started to de-stem them, which we're gonna do, and take the seeds out. Cause listen, they're like little maracas, but we don't want the seeds. So do this. We snip them at the top for all of them. We open them up. We take the seeds out, cut them into smaller pieces, and we throw them in our blender. And if you end up with a few seeds, don't worry about it. And now we hydrate them, bring them back to life by adding three cups of hot beef broth. Cover them up, leave them for 15 minutes. Now we deal with our beef. That there would be about a three pound chuck roast that we want to sear in pieces in our pressure cooker. So we have to cut it up first. Just make it nice and easy for yourself. If you make them pieces about this big, they'll be easy to deal with. Now fat, you know, like fat's flavor, but we don't need quite that much. But before we put them in, we give them a little love, a little neutral oil because the neutral oil will now help our BFF, our salt, pepper, granulated garlic. When you've got some BFF on all sides, you can open our pressure cooker that's been on the browning setting so it's super hot. We'll start to give these guys a good sear. Nice and hot, and in we go. That's what you want. You want to hear some of that sizzle because it means it's hot enough and it's going to help brown. But we're going to do these a few at a time. If you put too many in, they'll just drop the temp. And we want to get a nice, good brown color all the way around because that will lead to more flavor. So take your time. I'll do this batch, do the rest, and then we'll carry on. This last batch is done, out it comes. Looking beautiful, I might add. We're gonna give it a little shot of oil. We're still on browning inside. Then we'll add one yellow onion sliced. This will get about four or five minutes until it softens. And when your onions are softened and looking outstanding, then we go with about six cloves of peeled and rough chopped garlic. Give it a little stir. Let it work its magic for 35, 45 seconds till it gets real fragrant. Tired of saying that, but it's important to know. Don't let it go longer, you don't want it to burn. And right when you really smell the hell out of it, in the best way ever, we follow up with three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Three, and just give it a couple minutes to evaporate a little bit. All right, we can kill the heat. Our beef will go back in. We all know what's coming and we're so excited. We love this birria recipe. And of course, any remaining juice needs to go in. That's just pure gold right there. That's gonna just sit for a couple seconds. Let's finish off our sauce in the blender. Remember this? So these chilies, now look, now they're all soft and pliable. Wow, and they smell great. Hey, we add a few things to it. The first will be a tablespoon of each of the following. Coriander. Chance, what is the fresh version of coriander? Oh God. Cuban? Cilantro? Cilantro. Oh, wow. Very good, Max. No idea. Chance, come on. I knew that. Cumin, oregano. We go a good pinch of our BFF. A couple chipotle chilies in adobo sauce. You know these guys, big, fat, plumped beautifully smoked, adds so much flavor. One more thing, 15 ounce can of fire roasted tomatoes. We put the lid on and we blitz. Ha <laughs> ha, you do this, contact. We want this fully smooth or as smooth as you can get it. Perfecto, all right, comes off. Let's get back to the pressure cooker, here we go. 
That's going to be outstanding. A little of this I always like to do. Let it get down to the bottom if it wasn't already there. Put our lid on, lock it in place, and now we'll set it. High pressure for five to zero minutes. It's going to come to pressure. When it does, it will lock it. We want to make sure that our little valve on top is set to pressure and not release. We move on to ramen carbonara. We begin our carbonara with a cold pan, about four ounces of pancetta. Pancetta goes in, now we turn on the pan, sort of medium high. Our goal now is to extract the fat from this. It's much better when you start with a cold pan because it happens slowly. So we'll just spread this out a bit. This is gonna take a few minutes. So here you go. Pancetta is essentially bacon that's been cured with uh, pepper and spices as opposed to bacon that's been cured with salt and then smoked so there's really nothing to see there now but i promise good things are going to happen so while we're waiting for this let's uh, dress our egg component we begin with a bowl and two eggs no shell no shell before we beat the eggs now you can really hear the pancetta starting to take off and you can see the little bits of spices and flecks in here we're getting it sort of crispy-esque like a uh, bacon back to our eggs and the eggs will beat. Then we'll add two things. The first will be about a third of a cup of delicious Parmesan. It could be Pecorino Romano. I do believe somehow that that's the official cheese of carbonara, but it's often made with this. So a good Parmesan, definitely not the bag stuff. And to this, we'll add about a teaspoon of black pepper. And if you can get it out of a grinder, all the better. Let's mix this. All right, let's set this to the side. Continue on with our pancetta, but also drop our ramen into the boiling water. Those are gonna take about three minutes. We're so close. Come back to our pancetta. See that? I don't want all that. Give me one second. Let me get rid of most of that grease and I'll be back. All right, here's how this goes down. Lids off, bring our noodles, we pick them up, and we come right over, and a little bit of this pasta water is a good thing. Get all the noodles in, 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 in. This little bit of water that's here, and maybe even a little extra that I might grab out of the pot, is gonna help thin this and get it to a spot that's beautifully rich and creamy. We start to mix, and now comes our egg. Pepper, cheese combo. And we go right like this, and we start mixing right away. I can smell the pepper. Wow, look at that. Cheesy, gorgeous, oh, rich, thick. Hold on, son. I'm having a bite. So just a little parsley, because why not? A nail bite. Oh, I'm really getting pepper and cheese and deliciousness. You know, I should put a little bit more Parmesan on top, but holy shit, the crispiness of the pancetta. Am I missing the fact that it's not spaghetti and that it's a inexpensive pack of ramen? No, I'm not at all. But wait, don't stop there because next up, it's little gochujang Korean version, shrimp, amazingness. Korean spicy garlic shrimp ramen. We'd begin with shrimp, of course. Here's what we're gonna do. Give me a little neutral oil hit. That's avocado. A little mush around with your hands. And then they get two things. You get a little of our BFF seasoning. And then I'm using this gorgeous stuff. This is called gochugaru. It's a Korean red pepper powder. Max reminded me we've got video of me buying this in Seoul. I got the 500 grams of gochugaru. See this? I have this in my refrigerator right now. This exact one, gochujang. But gochugaru is the pepper seasoning. I got this one. If you don't have this, then a little chili powder, a little smoked paprika, a little cayenne combo would be great. But the color is great. The flavor is better. So same drill here. Just mush all these guys around. Gochugaru, not to be confused with gochujang, which is the red pepper paste that we'll also be using. Needless to say, we're fans of all things Korean since having shot there recently. These are perfect, gonna be beautifully spicy. Let's get a pan and cook. First things first, a little butter. Or as Paula Dean would say, booter. To that, we'll give it a little shot of oil, keep it from burning. And now that that's hot and toasty, we'll add some garlic. And this is about four big cloves minced up. It gets fragrant, which is now an ingoar shrimp. And these are not gonna take long. You can get them in one layer, get them in one layer. Now we're just cooking shrimp. And I believe you're all familiar with the fact that shrimp do not take very long to cook. Like this. They're already almost there. Smell that. Gochugaru. The garlic. They can't smell it. Oh, you can't smell. Then I'm talking to you guys. You guys smell. You know what would have been really handy here instead of these tongs? 
Those douche tweezers. All right. Joe, can we get some douche tweezers? <laughs> All right, we're about 25 seconds away from great freaking shrimp. And there's a sauce coming, so if you didn't even finish cooking them here, you have a chance to finish off in the sauce a little bit. All right, but this makes me happy. Let's take these out and begin the sauce. And off we go. To our pan, now a big glob. What is that, a third of a cup of gochujang. And here's a version that I buy from my everyday supermarket. It's becoming really common to find. But now the heat will help this start to break down a little bit. I know it doesn't look like it, but take my word for it. So we toast it just a little bit. I guess we can add a couple other things. One will be some cream, heavy whipping cream. What was that, about a half a cup? And it will start to blend in much nicer here. Coming along, a couple other things to add. About a tablespoon and a half of soy or soy paste, and then a half teaspoon sesame oil. Please don't overdo the sesame oil, you'll be very sorry. If you could smell what was happening here, now we can come back to our spatula, because look at this. Ladies and gentlemen, you're ready. All we need now is our noodles and our shrimp, and we can get them. Let's put the shrimp back in and all the little extra pieces of garlic that came off. Oh my God, look at this. I can tell you this is thick. And when we add the noodles, we're gonna want a little bit of that water that they cooked in to help thin this a bit. You got something amazing coming here. And it's go time. Here come the noodles. Just drag some of that water right in with it. It'll make everything better. And don't spill it for God's sakes. Here we go. You can see it's beautifully rich and thick, but I want it just a little thinner. So a little bit of our cooking water like that will help. Just a little bit of a thinning. And then as it starts to absorb and we're done. You can see it's still rich and creamy, just a little bit looser. Oh my God. All right, kill the heat, fling some green onion on top. Bob's your frickin' uncle. And then maybe a little bit more of the gochu garu for a little pick me up of the red. Wow. And we're done and we're tasting. So in we come, let's twirl ourselves a little of the ramen, get a shrimp, and that is for me. Hear that? Pressure cooker is done, the birria is done. The pressure will release by itself for about 10, 12 minutes, and then we'll make that birria ramen. But first, that. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm speechless. It is that good, it is that creamy. It is that wonderful. And the spice level from the gochugaro is about a, a six out of 10, maybe a six and a half, which is nothing crazy, unless you can't take spice. Oh my God, it is so good. But now the birria. Ah, today, what an amazing food day today's been so far. Here we go into the birria. Oh my God, it's birria time. So it's cooked. The pressure has released. We're gonna take the meat out in a second, uh, separate it from the broth to make the soup for the noodles, and all will be great. But much like you would have if you went to a proper ramen restaurant, when you get the bowl of ramen, one of the things that might be in the bowl is that ramen egg, that beautifully perfect cut in half jammy yolk. I love that, it's one of my favorite things. I'm gonna show you how to make it. There's one particular piece of equipment that you need that I brought in this because I didn't wanna lose it or hurt myself. You ready? It's a push pin. Sam, what are we doing with the push pin? Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take your egg, skinny end, fat end, and the fat end, we're gonna make a hole. Poke in like this. Your head's gonna tell you that it's gonna explode in your hand. Well, it's not, it just makes a little tiny hole. Now we do it with this one and in, all right? Now to our boiling water. To our pot of already rapidly boiling water. We're gonna take our egg and we're gonna slowly lower it a couple of times just to let it heat sort of gently and then in it goes. A cold egg going into boiling water without that hole I think for sure is gonna crack but this way we help it along and now we give it six and a half minutes exactly on the clock. And while that's happening, let's deal with the birria. All right, remember we've cooked, we've depressurized and there we are. Now, to me, that's absolute magic. But look in here. Here's the cool part. Now watch. When I squeeze it, that, that is what happens. Show you again, ready? Squeeze. Is that tender? Oh yeah, that's tender. I'll set this aside for now. We're gonna get this crispy before we serve it. But now this, this is our broth. This is the pot I'm gonna warm it in. There's fat on top that we'll get once it comes in here. So let's do this though, mix it up. Then if you get bits of meat and onion, that's okay. Holy smokes, man. Look what it looks like down here. So 
is what you want to do. This broth, we don't need all these pieces for. You're welcome to have them, but let's just get yourself a nice, beautiful little pot's worth of that. Oh man, oh man, oh man. And now if we just let this sit for a couple of minutes, any fat will just sit on the top. If it's too much for you, you can skim it off, but look. Okay, this is what our ramen is gonna be served in. So let's have a little taster bite, shall we? It is rich and silky smooth and so good. The egg's coming out. I'll put it in cold water to stop it cooking. Let's get some of our birria crispy and we get our bowl going. What's gonna make this birria ramen really good is some crispy beef. So this is a hot pan, that's a little neutral oil. And here's some of our birria. We'll just put a nice little amount in there and let it go, I don't know, a minute and a half aside till it gets crispy. Meanwhile, we'll give Chance and Max a bite of the birria. And after a little bit of time, see that? Did you see that? This is what is gonna make all the difference between amazing and super amazing. Okay, we're so close. I'm taking this away, I'm warming up my broth, we're building our bowl. Let's do an egg while we're waiting. Jeez, I really want this to work out nicely. You know there's that little membrane, right? If you get under that membrane, it will peel easily. If you don't, it can be a shit show. But these are also eggs that are about a week and a half old and an older egg peels much better. Oh, I can feel the tenderness inside. That could be a song. I feel the tenderness inside. Let's have a look. We take a little knife. It's perfect. It's everything you want. If you like a jammy egg. Hey, if you hate a jammy egg, then, then don't put an egg in. But I think you're missing the boat. Let's build. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my noodles. And the last couple ones, we've wanted some of this pasta water to thin the sauce. Not in this case. So I'm gonna let most of it drip off. Or as much as I can. Now. Oh, Lord. Now some of our beef, look how gorgeous it is. Like that, a little bit of cilantro that I love so much, and then jammy egg. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the ramen birria that you want to be making tonight. So let's see, the way to attack this would be with a spoon and a fork, right? Maybe you want a little bit of the broth first. Yeah, you want the broth first, oh holy shit. Now I'll try and cultivate a really nice bite. Some of the ramen, of course and some of the birria. That's what you want. That is what you want. <laughs> First, the soft ramen, ridiculously enhanced by that birria liquid. Then the crispy beef. And you gotta make it crispy, because if you don't, you're missing an opportunity to have competing textures in there, which is one of my favorite ways to eat. And then the way to wrap the whole thing up is you have some jammy egg. Mm. Oh my God, you must, you must, you must. I know I always say it, but I mean it. And we've been eating all this nonsense all the way through and we are happy as pigs in you know what. If you're not a subscriber, we'd love you to be one. Hit the like button. And if you're still here, thanks for hanging out to the end of the uh, video. Don't eat the same thing all the time. Follow us, Cooking Guy on Instagram. There's all kinds of good stuff there and some nonsense.